Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Most Holy God. Praise the Most Holy God. And welcome to all of you here in the live audience, and welcome to my social media audience. I am coming to you live from the Bronx, New York. Not California. That California is burning. But anyway, we are glad to be here. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of God? Yes. I didn't hear you. Yes. Praise God. Yes, you get it. Now it's getting cold here. It's in November. This is November 9th and already. I'm not sure what happened here in the Bronx, but I know up where I live in the Poconos. We had a snow flurry, uh, was it yesterday, I think? I was like, what? What's going on here? And then I wake up this morning there, ice flaked over the car, and I like, oh no, this is getting crazy. But hey, why can you Give God thanks, right? Amen. So we give God thanks in the rain, we give God thanks in the snow, we give God thanks in the hail, we give God thanks in everything. Because that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And on Thursday, November 28th, as this month, Thursday, November 28th, let me put my, my eyes there. On Thursday, November 28th, 2019, as is the tradition of millions of Americans from sea to shining sea, Millions of Americans will be eating turkey. <laughs> Gathering together with their families and friends with pounds and pounds of baked turkey, roasted turkey, and all the trimmings. You know, the sweet potatoes and the corn and the cranberry sauce and the, the whatever drinks you have, I don't know, all those other stuff. Everybody has their own traditions and that is fine. I'm all for that. I have nothing against that. I think there's a wonderful thing that was started by the Pilgrims in 1621. Some of you may not even remember that, but I was there in 1621. <laughs> 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 yeah. We knew you were. Yeah, the Pilgrims, you know, they were Pilgrims and they celebrated. It was a harvest. Actually, it was a harvest festival. Mm -hmm. And from my recollection of history, it was a three day celebration of that first harvest. Mm -hmm. And they were thanking God. The Pilgrims were very religious. They were thanking God for bringing them from Europe and for providing food and shelter for them. The season was wonderful. Harvest. Praise God. Now, it was in 1863, just to give you a little understanding, I'm not going to be talking about thanks every day, but I'm talking about thanks. 1863, that President Abraham Lincoln, who was named after me, <laughs> he proclaimed it to be a federal holiday. 1863. So it began in 1621, and George Washington continued, but it didn't become a, a federal holiday until <coughs> President Abraham Lincoln. And here's what he said, this is a brief quote from him. He said, uh, he made it a national day of thanksgiving, I quote, of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwells in the heavens. Thank you, President Lincoln. It was designed, it, was, it became a holiday, or proclaimed a holiday, national holiday, to give thanks to God, our beneficent Father. Now, I, I think, here we are in 2019, I don't say this, what I'm saying, to judge anybody, but there's a lot of questions I think we can all ask. How many people in America, Americans, when they get together with their families and friends or whatever they do on Thanksgiving, how many pause to give our Father thanks? Uh, yes. Thanks to God for all the blessings so that we can have the abundance of this too. Yes. How many of us look forward to Thanksgiving Day for the sake of the turkey and all the trimmings and the abundance of food? I mean, we have food and food and food and people who plan, they cook and they cook and they cook and they cup run over. But do we ever, I'm just asking you, do you ever on your table say, before we eat, everybody will give thanks to God for something? Yes. We will pray and we will identify some things to say, thank you, Father. Or A, B, C, D, E, F, one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than have people come to your house or your friend, well, this turkey isn't good. This cranberry sauce isn't good. This is complain and murmur, complain and murmur and grumble, complain and murmur and grumble. Those people who 
complain and murmur and grumble will never enjoy life. Did you know that? So that's why I want to talk today about in everything give God thanks. In everything give God thanks. Now let me be very clear. It, whether that you serve in that, even though that's your personal business, okay? I believe it's a wonderful thing to do. And I choose to do it. If you don't want to do it, then you don't have to do it. But I tell you one thing for sure. If you don't give God thanks every day in your life, you are lacking a lot. And you're going to be in big trouble. Don't wait for the last Thursday of November to give thanks. Thanksgiving is a daily activity that God expects from His children. Just as you, your parent, you expect your children, uh, it is to be infuriating and, and horrible when children never thank their parents. Yes. It is, you parents, how does it feel when your children all they do is ask for things and never say, thank you, mom, thank you, dad, thank you, mom, thank you, dad. And we have to insist, if you don't say thank you, you get nothing else. Stop. We have to instill the value from the day they are born. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to show you from the Word of God why I'm going to the last part of the sermon will be about the benefits of giving thanks actually. And you'll be amazed at what the benefits are. Maybe you've never thought about it. You know, you just say, well, we should give God thanks. And that's theologically correct. But I want to show you the benefits of actually giving thanks to God on a daily basis. Amen? So if you open your Bible, you'll go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Let me see what we have on the screen there. That Okay, give thanks and everything. Thankful. Okay, amen. Give thanks and everything. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5. Open up your sword, the Bible. And this is the word of God. Blessed be his name. Lord, we thank you for your word. You know, everything we preach here must come from the Bible. Go ahead, amen. amen. Yes, so Paul the apostle writing to the church at Thessalonica. And here is what he said. Here is what he wrote. Verse 16, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now he connects, there is a connection between thanksgiving and praise. Some of us don't realize that even Christians, when you come in the house of God and it's time to praise, you should really be involved in praise. I want to make that observation. You need to be involved in praising God. When you're in the house of worship, and we are singing praise, they're called singing praises. What do we do? You should be singing out praises to God. Amen. And for those, who, for those of you who still have hands that can be lifted, lift them up and praise God. Praise the Lord. Yes. Before the day comes and you can't lift them up. Mm -hmm. I see, I hope you see where I'm going with Some of us don't give God enough thanks, but all we do is mumble and grumble. We need to stop that and change. Turn to your partner, to your friend, next door to you, next to you, and say, We need to change. You and I both need to change. Change. We need to change. We need to change. Give thanks. Tell the neighbor, give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Amen. Give thanks to God. So, in 1 Thessalonians 5, again, look carefully what Paul wrote. Rejoice always. How often is always? Always. Don't wait for Thanksgiving Day. Don't wait for Christmas. Don't wait for your birthday. Don't wait for some anniversary. Rejoice always. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Not pray when you have a problem. Pray without ceasing. And verse 18. In everything, give thanks. Now, I know what you're going to say, but is that possible? In everything? What about bad things? I'll, I'll get to that later on in the sermon. In everything, give thanks. For this is... The will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Paul, Paul is not making a suggestion. Paul is saying, giving thanks in everything is God's will for us. Amen. Do I hear that? Amen. Is God's will. So if you are going to tell me, and if some people, well, I don't have anything to be thankful for, you have just insulted the grace of God. Yes, because you're alive. Amen. Amen. I hope you heard that loud. I'm glad to see that the prayer this morning is all about praising, thanking God. Thanking God, thanking God, thanking God. The more we thank God, the more we will see growth in our own lives. Yeah. And the more God will bless us with it. Amen? Amen. So before I expound this verse, I want to go to the Old Testament to show you where we see a great example of King David. Who wrote the Psalms? A few of those Psalms, not all of them. <coughs> there are many Psalms where David says, give thanks to God. Amen. Give thanks to God. 
Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Enter into his courts. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. So first one, Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Our key scripture, remember, is 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, 17, 18. I will look at that there. But let's go now to Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Very straightforward. Nothing, no great theology here. And you can't miss the, miss the message. It is verse 1 and verse 2. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Hallelujah. Wow. Somebody said praise the Lord. Praise it the Lord. is, everybody, it is what? Good. good. It is what? Good. good. To do what? To good. give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises good. to your name, O Most High. Amen. Verse 2. I love verse 2. Look at it. Let's not miss it. To declare your loving kindness in the morning. Yes. So you wake up in the morning. Listen well. You wake up in the morning. And the first thing you say is rather than. Oh, some people work at the first thing in the morning. Oh, another day. <laughs> oh, I wish I didn't have to get up. That is so pathetic. So pathetic. If you're a Christian. And that's how you wake up in the morning. You get up and you declare His loving kindness in the morning. Lord, I thank you. I'm alive for another day. Praise God. I'm going to go there and do what I've got to do for the glory of God. And notice the next part of the verse. And your faithfulness by night. Every night. So what do you say? You wake up in the morning, immediately you declare the praise of God. And before you go to bed, you say, Lord, thank you for the day. Do you see what you've done there? Night, morning, you wake up in the morning. You praise God, you declare His praises, and you declare it again in the night before you go to bed. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in providing everything. Every one of us in this room, and those of you listening to me on social media, I can guarantee you almost, I don't know those of you listening to me on social media, but I'm almost certain that every day you have food more than you need. I'm almost certain here, those of you listening to me, that all of you in this room have more clothing than you need. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. More clothing than you yes. More shoes than you need. Yes. More jewelry than you need. Yes. Whether it's gold or silver or cosmetic, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Everybody here has more than you need. Yeah. Do we give God thanks? The last Saturday I talked about the Presbyterian Church. Now, they don't have more than they need, but they do have God. Yes. And when you have God, it's all that you need. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You can have nothing in life, nothing, nothing else in this world, but if you have God, you have everything. Amen. And even if you die, you still have everything. Let me go worry about it. Amen. But you see, our culture doesn't teach us that. We live in a culture that's about get, get, get. Amen. Look good. Amen. Look good. You know, you gotta, you gotta have this to look good. You gotta impress people. I don't know why you're trying to impress. Everybody's trying to impress everybody. For what purpose? Show off pride and arrogance. And this, these are some of the benefits you will learn later on. Why it's dangerous to try to impress people. Amen. Psalm 95. Psalm 95. We go to Psalm 95, verse one and verse two. I love this. David was a man after God's own heart. Yes, we remember that David did some, made some major blunders in his life. Yes, he sinned some big sins. All of us can remember that. But look at the things he wrote. And obviously, his lifestyle manifested these things. So verse 1 and verse 2, we read, Oh, come, let us sing, let us do what? Sing to the Lord. Let us what? Shout joyfully to the rock. Of our salvation. Let us shout joyfully. How do, when you come in the house of the Lord, do you shout joyfully? Yes. God gave you a voice. Why can't you shout joyfully? Praise God! Nothing wrong in shouting. You know, we don't talk about you, you, you spend your whole day shouting, that's, that's all. But it's a time you shout God, praise God! Hallelujah. Look at verse 2. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. As we enter the presence of God every Saturday we are here, and every time you get up in the morning and you and you and you pray, you have entered the presence of God, right? Yeah. 
So you enter the presence of God with thanksgiving, not with moaning and groaning and complaining and murmuring and grumbling and dissatisfaction. And <laughs> if, you, if that's the way you enter God's presence every day, let me tell you something, your life is pitiful. <laughs> Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to Him with psalms. Amen. Now, if you don't know the psalms, you don't have to have a PhD in psalmology, and I'm just being funny with you. Just open the Bible and read the psalms. Amen. I was talking to my mother yesterday, and of course, at that age, she doesn't go. She's not that she's home bound, but at that age, she's better for her to stay home. Say, but. She's always walking up and down. She says, you know, I've spent my whole day reading the Psalms. Mm. And I said, great, wonderful. She spent the whole day reading the Psalms. I mean, what more can you do? She doesn't want to watch the news because the news is garbage. You know, a lot of us know that. So why watch this garbage news which will get you irritated, depressed, and angry? Might as well read the Psalms. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm just using it as an example. Maybe all of you can relate to that. Maybe in your own life. Maybe your grandparents' life, your mother's life, your father's life. A lot of these people who grew up in the church, people, they reach a certain age and all of these things. God, Lord, thank you. Praise the Lord. Bless this one and bless the other one. You know, that's great. Wonderful. Amen. So we have to understand that it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. All right, moving on. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Watch this. I'm just using a few psalms to make the point because it's always good for us to look at what the Bible says. What the Bible says. And I, I, I'm not one of those preachers, as you already know, I'll come here. I have a word from the Lord for you. Some little special revelation I had last night. No, I did have a word from the Lord, of course, because it's in the Word. <laughs> Every time I preach, I have a word from the Lord. the Lord. It is in the Word. It is the Bible. Yes. Not some concoction. And my own imagination running crazy. No, no, I, I don't you know, in, indulge in that kind of nonsensical preaching. You all know that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Psalm 105, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make his known, make known, sorry, his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Do you do that? Talk of all his wondrous works? You know, that's why sometimes you say anybody has a testimonial. You should be talking about God's wonderful works. Thank you, Lord. You woke me up. I know some of the, oh, oh, you, the older ones, you always say, well, I thank God you woke me up this morning. That's a good way to start. I thank God you woke me up this morning. But there's a lot more to thank God for after you woke me up. Right? Okay. Amen. Amen. Do you thank God that you can still eat food? Mm -hmm. What about those who are right on a hospital bed yeah. who cannot chew food and they have been fed the food through a tube? If you don't know what to be thankful for, perhaps you need to visit the hospital every week. Mm. And maybe that will wake you up to reality. How about that? Mm. Or go visit a cemetery, you know? Mm. And maybe you get my point. Mm. Or go visit a slum in some part of the world and spend a month in the slums and see what happens. Mm. I, I'm making a point for you, obviously, right? Mm. So, give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the peoples, sing to Him, sing psalms to Him, talk of all His wondrous works, verse 3, glory in His holy name. Yahweh, Yahweh, His holy name, Adonai, glory in His holy name. When we pray, Jesus told us to pray, O Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name, glory in His name. The first thing we do, glory in His name. When you approach God's throne privately or corporately as you do in the church, you don't know, first thing is, Lord, I need, I need, I need. Lord, I want. No, glory in His holy name. Amen? Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. You know, I, I don't think we in the USA understand these verses anymore. You know, because I listen to some of these pastors once in a while, not regularly, because I, I've grown wary of these television people. And their message basically the same. Is all of them have the same script. The same script they're reading from. It's almost like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Look at God's face. 
Now, I'm going to get to the difficult part of the sermon. This is the easy part. The difficult part of the sermon is when you start talking about, well, what, what happens when things are going bad? Ah, mm. oh, now that's a whole different baby. We'll talk about that in a short while. So, let the hearts of those who rejoice to seek the Lord, seek the Lord at His strength, seek His face evermore. Verse 5. Remember His marvelous works which He has done. Ah, there's a key for you. Remember. So right now you may not be going through a season of blessings, at least not that you can perceive, but remember when you are. And maybe there's a reason for the season. Yes. You get my point? And when you get a perspective, it's like, mm, okay, God is up to something. Oh, by the way, God is always up to something. <laughs> God is always up to something. It says that we don't always know when He's up to something and what He's doing with the something. Amen. But in due time, we will learn, right? right. Remember His marvelous works which He has done, His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. O oh, seed of Abraham, His servant, your future children of Jacob, His chosen one. So, of course, we know the Bible, the Old Testament, it's written for, primarily for the Israelites. But it's a principle for us too, right? Yes. Because we also are God's chosen seed in the spirit. We are God's chosen Abraham's spiritual seed. Amen. Amen. So what do we see so far in the Psalms? An emphasis on giving thanks. Praising God. Thanking Him for all that He has done for us from the morning to the night. You'd be amazed how that will radically transform your entire perspective of life. Well, I'll, I'll get into that in, in a few minutes. Let's go to Psalm 107. And that's the last Psalm before I go back to the New Testament. Psalm 107. 107. Verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. And then, this entire Psalm 107 is about giving thanks, after mm. uh, I'm not going to spend a whole time reading it, but just a few verses I want to highlight. Drop on down to verse 8. Verse 8. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. It's like the psalmist is crying out, Oh, that man would give thanks. Oh, my brother. Oh, my sister. Oh, only if you would give thanks to God for what you already have. Yeah. And you will see life through different lenses. Yeah. And everything will change. Yeah. Rather than Compare and contrast. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody in the house tonight? Yeah. This morning, sorry. Yeah. 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 Amen. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Yeah. For he satisfies the longing soul. This is verse 9. He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry with goodness. And then he goes on to give specific points of application of how to thank God and conditions. And you know, some of the points he makes here, which again, I don't have time to go through, but when the, when the children of Israel went to the wilderness, those were not some good times. You know? They went through some very bad times. The heat of the desert and all the, the lack of food, and then God would say, don't worry, I've got you coming. Here comes the big truck of food for you. He says, now, be thankful. You know, one of the things that the prophet said, God himself, after God himself had warned Moses to tell the children of Israel, when you enter into the promised land, and you run, when you enter the land which I have given you, which I swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and when you have increased in goods and built houses and farms and, and you know, you have estates, beware lest you forget. The problem of not giving thanks is you forget the goodness of God. And the moment you forget the goodness of God to your life, your life will take a dive down. Do you get it? Yes. Amen. Amen. So he goes on and on and on. Verse 14, no, verse, verse 12. Therefore he brought, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them. Notice what God does. God allows them, God allows them to go into trouble. And then they cry out to God. And what does God do? He saves them. So in that way we can see the glory and power and the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. Verse 15. Oh, that man will give thanks to the Lord for all his goodness. Yes, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You can read the entire section. Psalm 107. And be blessed over and over as the psalmist says, Oh, that man will give thanks to the Lord. All oh, the Christians will give thanks to the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Every single day. Every single day. Give thanks and everything. Never get it. I've never did a good part. So, thus far from the Psalms, it's pretty nice. It's wonderful. God has blessed you. Thanks. Something you wanted, thank you. What about when there's something you didn't want? Ah, <laughs> oh boy. This is the part of the sermon that, um, you know, gets a little tricky for some. So let's leave the Old Testament for a while and go to the New Testament now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, it's obvious by reading of Psalms that admonition to give thanks is it, it's clear. Nobody needs to explain it any further. It's very clear. It's an admonition, advice, good counsel, give thanks to God. But, what happens when things are not going the way you want? Life becomes painful. Tragedies. You lost, you lose a wife, you lose a wife, you lose a husband, you lose a loved one, you lose your pet dog. I wonder where it is, you know? Because for some people, their greater attachment is to the pet dog than to their own children. Um, what happens? So let's go back to First Thessalonians now, back to First Thessalonians. Let's put this in perspective. So Paul the Apostle is writing, and we will spend a few more moments talking about Paul's life. Paul says in verse 16 of chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians, Rejoice always. How often? Everybody? Always. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything? Paul, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Let, 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 let's be, let's, yeah. Have a little confrontation with Paul. Paul is telling me everything. So I'm sick. I'm really sick. I'm sick for years, and you're saying give thanks. My finances are in a horrible state, but I can't pay my bills, and you're saying give thanks. My relationships are messed up, and I'm losing, and you're saying give thanks. I can't get a job for extra no reason, and you're saying give thanks. Paul, you're a wacko. You see, the thing is this Paul understood something that a lot of Christians don't understand. Paul didn't say, give thanks for it. The word, the preposition, in and for, two different words. He said, give thanks in everything, not for it. Is there a difference? Of course there is. Yes. You don't say, Lord, I want to thank you some more, so just give me more pain. No. But as you go through the pain, you're thanking God for what will come at the end of the pain, and the process which he is using to define you and to refine you. Amen. Yes. But that's hard! Well, of course it's hard, but we will get there in the short while. So, I'm just trying to explain something. Paul is not saying give thanks to God for the bad things. He says give thanks to God in spite of the bad things in everything. I hope you heard the difference. Yes. So you think of the average person, when bad things go, no, no. So now let's think of the good things, you know. Everything is good, I got more money, more money than I need, I got a house, car, wife, children, husband, friends, I got a great job, I have fancy clothes. Hey! Let's change the scenario. Now you lose almost everything. Like Joe. You lost all the families. You lost all your investments. You lost your mate, whether through divorce or death. You lose your children, whether through separation or whatever. And you lose your job. Wow. And all of that begins to affect your health. So now you lose your health. And all of that affects your friendships, because who wants to have poor friends? I get my point. And now you go to Paul for advice. Hey, Apostle Paul, I've lost everything. Apostle says, give thanks to God and everything. <laughs> He said, another counselor, please. <laughs> I, I, think, I think you got the point, right? I think you got the point already. What is God up to? What is God doing? See, here in the U.S., especially in the recent times, we are treated to a culture that tells you, you know, it's about you, 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 you. The whole emphasis, in, even in Christian culture today, is you. My friends, the emphasis is God. Amen. Christ working in him for his pleasure and his glory and ultimately for your good. But you don't see that. It's like, I want it now and I want it my way. 
Okay, those of us who, who have had children or still have little children, have you noticed how a child can be a horrible little cricket? Yeah. Oh, don't take offense, you overly righteous people listening to me. You think your child is an angel. Your child is not an angel. The only angels are with God in heaven. So don't tell me your child is an angel, your dog is an angel, and this kind of foolish theology I hear. It's nonsensical. Your child is a human being with a selfish human nature. Right. And your child will nag you until you either give him what he wants or he kills you. What a woman. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yes, yes. 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 Oh, but you know, no, no, no. My little sweet baby, your little sweet baby is a bottle of trouble. Oh, you're, you're so mean. Um, I happen to know a lot of my children. I've had, I have four. Plus, being a counselor for many years and working with children, running a, a, a scout group, uh, I have a, a extensive experience working with children from diff at different ages. Amen? Amen. So don't give me your, your spin. Your spin is wrong. The child insists, I want it now. I want it now! I want it now! I want it now! At that point, you really want to rip the child's head off his, bring it out. And thank God you don't, because if you do that, you're really, you're a murderer at the point. Okay. Everybody got a point? But do you know sometimes we are that little God? Yes. Ah. Yeah. We look at a little child and we say, what a little monster you are. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't realize that sometimes in our relationship with our spiritual father, we are acting like that little monster. Yeah. Although God doesn't call us monster. <laughs> he still loves us. Am I making sense to anyone? Yes. You know, did Paul have everything good in his life? No. no. The Bible is very clear. Did, did Peter and John have everything good in their lives? No. When, 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 you know, in the book of Acts, what happened to Peter and John? They, they began preaching. <laughs> Shortly after their Pentecost, they're preaching and they get arrested. And they're thrown in jail. Right? And you know what the book of Acts does is? They counted in a joy. <laughs> to be considered worthy to suffer for Christ. Yes. Can you believe it? You want to see? Let's go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Here it is. Acts chapter 5. Yes, yeah, so Peter and John, they had been thrown in jail, they were beaten up, they were warned, don't go speaking in the name of Jesus anymore, otherwise a worse thing will befall you. And what do we find in verse 40? And they agreed with him, that's Gamaliel, the, 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 the Sanhedrin. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, again, these are religious people, beating other religious people. When they had beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So verse 41, so they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So here Peter and John, you know, they get the warnings, they get the whippings, you know, boy, I'm sure it was hurting, but however, they were whipped badly, they were whipped, they came out, and they said, thank you, Lord, that you consider us worthy to suffer for your name. Wow. What a change, what a different perspective. We sometimes, the electricity goes off for a few minutes and we curse, we curse the, um, the, the, the electric uh, board. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 you know what I mean? We, we want to curse all these companies because they, they mess up. We forget that they, they have imperfect people working with imperfect conditions, etc., etc. Whether or not they're doing a good job, a good job or a bad job, the fact of the matter is we are living in a broken, messed up world. And yet we expect perfection yes. from these organizations. Yes. And when we don't get that water delivered on time, or whatever delivered on time, we really get cranky and we are Christians. <laughs> How about giving God thanks? Yeah. Change the perspective. Lord, I thank you. Yeah. Now that you shouldn't complain, there's a religion in time to complain. I said, my, my phone is... I've had some problems with my phone. Okay. Um, for the last Tuesday night, my, 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 my phone, which is a Samsung 8, you know, it's working perfect. And I'm trying to fix something in it, and I'm instead of fixing it, it got worse. <laughs> so I said, oh, Lord, what do I do? So I go over to where I bought it. 
And uh, the guy looks at me, he's, a perfect, he's an expert on these things. I said, you know, expert. I said, good, you're the, you're the man I'm talking to. And he took about one hour with me, very politely. Wow. I mean, we developed a relationship, we're talking, you know, like friends almost, you can say. And he's patiently trying to solve a problem. And eventually, he says, you know, the only way we can solve the problem, we have to separate the glass from the back. And that will break the glass because the, these phones are now sealed. Not, not like old phones that you could not screw them. They're sealed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, so what I mean? So when you buy a new glass, I said, well, we can get order for you. It'll cost so much money, and, but it'll take some time. And, and, and I said, I still can't guarantee after that it'll work. I'm saying, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, exactly. But I'm now, I said, Lord, take control because my, my, my phone, as you know, is, is, is my office, right? I, I mean, that's what I live with. All of us, mostly, we live on the phone. If you get my drift. For me, people cut that. My phone is the thing that that number, I mean, for many years, a long time. Says a God made out of it, and I've had a phone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe that phone number, sorry. <laughs> that phone number. Not the same phone. So it, it came down to this. He said, the only thing I can advise is that you have to upgrade that a new phone. It's a new phone, yeah. I said, but. <laughs> I can't afford that. You know those Samsung cans at one thousand dollars? He said, "No, I can't do that. It has to be something." He says, "Well, we do have another phone that is not as good as the Samsung can, but as good as the one you have, <laughs> which is a Samsung Eight. Nice. But it's not the, but they have the Eight and Nine. But I have the Eight. So I said, "What's the cost?" He said, "Well, actually, today we have a, a special sale on the value. It's right." It was reduced from whatever it was to $170. Yay! New phone here! I said $170. And I said, I said, how much does that mean in terms of payment per month? He said, only $7 a month for two years. I said, okay, give me a new phone. <laughs> you get my point? Yeah. Now, so I buy the new phone. And he transfers everything from the old one to the new one. Everything he does, no problem. I go home and I'm happy. Next thing you know, later on a day, I haven't received, I didn't receive a single call. I said, that's strange, no calls. <laughs> yet, I, yet I can call, but I can't receive any calls. No, no, no it's, it's brand new, right? So, that's a, I got to call Verizon. I can't call the same company, but the person who I bought a phone, they are a Verizon agent. I called Verizon. And the lady said, oh yeah, well, let me check that out. You know, I probably have all these things to check it out. And then eventually she calls me. And it works. She said, yeah, praise the Lord. And she was very pleasant and so was I. We had great conversation. Everybody I called, we had great conversation. And it's almost like they would do anything for me. And many times they would say, sir, it was a pleasure chatting with you. I wish we had more customers like you. Yeah, oh. amen, yeah. I'm making a point. I just say, everybody just bought this phone. It's a new phone. You people don't, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That's how most people do. And then they will give it you, is so, give you, oh, yeah, what, what an insult to God. I like when somebody, I've had a conversation with a person, I spent one hour on the phone, and, she, and he or she says, Sir, I wish more customers were like you. Yeah. I praise God for that. Yeah. Are we getting it? Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying that to most, I'm saying that to make a point. I must practice what I preach. Yeah. Yeah. Right? True. Now, the phone, yesterday, it still wasn't working. <laughs> Can't reach the phone. Now, my car, all of a sudden, it rings. It said, what is going on? So I'm going to call them back and be sure that everything is fine here with the setup. I don't know. I'm just showing you life happens. Mm -hmm. Bad things happen. Things you don't expect happen. What is your approach to it? Yeah. Are you going to start mumbling and grumbling and complaining and murmuring and getting angry and losing your perspective and losing your cool and saying things you shouldn't say? Is that how you deal with it as a Christian? Nope. Or you say, Lord, in all things, give thanks. And all things, Lord, even though it's not working, I'm going to give you thanks because well, whatever I can learn from this experience, I will learn from the experience. Amen. Do I have amen? amen? Do I have amen? Yes. So, Pit Paul, I mean, Peter and John were thanking God. We begun it. Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving us, allowing us this privilege of suffering for your name's sake. I think of all the pastors who live in places like Pakistan and India and North Korea and all of those Islamic countries who suffer for the name of Christ, and they thank God for their suffering. Oh, in their suffering. They thank God. Amen. What about Paul? What did Paul go through? You know, Paul wrote four, what's called four prison epistles. Yeah. One of them is the book of Philippians. What is the book of Philippians chapter 1? Philippians chapter 1. Watch this. Look what he says. Look at Paul's perspective on suffering. 
It didn't matter. He was in prison. Sometimes perhaps when you're reading the Bible, you might not realize that Paul is writing these things from prison. As a matter of fact, you know, the book, the book, the epistle of Philippians is the most joyful epistle. Yeah. It's the epistle of joy. But what you don't realize, unless you do the background of research, he was writing from prison. Look at what, what he wrote in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. He says, I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Mm. Wow. Perspective. The things, the bad things that happened to me are in prison, but actually God is using this for a greater purpose for the furtherance of the gospel. Amen. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And that and most of the brethren of the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. He said, the fact that I'm in prison for Christ, this has not encouraged members of the body of Christ who perhaps before were fearful, now they've become fearless. Amen. Amen. Perspective. So he was actually thanking God. We can go through the whole life of Paul. We don't have time to go through that because I want to get to the exciting part here. So, so there are many things in life. There are many scriptures. What's the application for you? Okay. So all of us in this room, and all, all of you listen to me, you have had or still suffer and will suffer some setbacks in life. Do I hear amen? Yes. Your health. Maybe you're, you are chronically diseased. You've tried every doctor and every pill and every surgery. And guess what? Nothing changed. Chronically ill. Maybe your finances. You're really struggling with your money. You don't have enough income. And things are getting more expensive. So you, maybe your family problems. Um, you know what I mean, family problems, so oh, yeah. Family problems, so oh, that can be that can be the a roller coaster on life when you got family problems. Maybe the job, no promotion. Yet you've been there ten years and they don't want to give you a promotion or even a raise, or they give you a raise of ten cents on the hour. You like ten dollars on the hour, okay. <laughs> Maybe it's the loss of a loved one with whom you lived for 20, 30, 40 years. Maybe the loss of a pet. You, you, you get my point? Mm -hmm. Or maybe, worst of all, it's persecution. Yes. All these circumstances are basically negative. Yet, Paul is saying, in all things, give God thanks. Amen. So whatever you're going through right now in your life, whatever that is to me too, whatever I am going through in my own life, whatever you are going through in your own life, as a Christian, God is saying to you and to me, in all things, give thanks. I don't see what good will come from this, Lord, and God will say to me, you don't have to see what good will come. I've already seen it, foreseen it, I will bring it to pass. By faith. By faith, you make the next step. Do I amen? amen? By faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, by faith, you must make the next step. By faith, you must make the next step. Hallelujah. By faith, you make the next step. Not worry. Give God thanks and everything. So, the whole, I, I can go to the gospel, I don't have time to go to that, but the whole point here is this. We who are Christians have to live a lifestyle of praise and thanksgiving. Praise and and thanksgiving. This sermon is primarily focused on thanksgiving. Giving thanks. Giving thanks in all things. So what are the benefits of giving thanks? Uh, now we come to the good one part, right? Again. Now uh, hear me out. I'm going to give you 12 points. 12 points on the benefits of thanksgiving. Now there is no specific order of importance because I just wrote these down as the Lord directed, so to speak. Okay? That's all I can say to you. So I'm there last night writing, writing these points down. I said, Lord, I know the benefits of thanksgiving. What are they? And lo and behold, by God's grace, my pen just began to write by itself. Okay, okay. Here are the 12 points that came up with. Now there could be more, but at least these 12 you will relate to. One, remember there is no order of importance, so don't try to attach number one as being the most important. They're all important. One, we are now talking about the benefits of giving God thanks and everything. Amen? One, it keeps us focused on the goodness and greatness of God. When we learn to give thanks in everything, 
Our focus will change. God is good and God is great. God is good and God is great. God is good and God is great. All the time. Amen? Amen. Do we agree on that? Yes. So when you give thanks every day in the morning and you give thanks at night, it keeps the focus on God. It shifts the focus of self. The problem in life is when the focus is on self. That's when we get into big problems. Number two, it helps us to be more content with what we have. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a big one. It, oh, what's one of the commandments again? Just to be funny. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's anything. What you have is what you can afford, hopefully. Not what you can't afford, but what you can afford. So it helps us to be content with what we have. And by the way, people who, are, who live in contentment tend to be happier. And at peace. This is an additional point. Number three. It prevents us from becoming arrogant and self-centered. Hmm. When you're thankful to God, you see what happens. You realize the source of your blessings. Right? When you don't acknowledge the source of your blessings, we can become arrogant. It's me. Me, 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 me. I, 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 I. This is the I generation. You know, there are people who preach sermons about I am, I am, I am, I am great, I am good, I am blessed, I am holy, I am wonderful, I am, I am, I am, I am. A dangerous theology. A very dangerous theology. The next step will be I am God. <laughs> now, it's good. We give thanks, it prevents us from becoming arrogant and self-centered. Point number four. It prevents us from the sin of covetousness, which I already alluded to. It prevents us from the sin of what? Covetous. Covetousness. It prevents us from the sin, and I use the word sin because covetousness is a sin. Point five. It keeps us at peace with God. The more we learn to give thanks to God and everything, the more peace we will have. You know, there is nothing sweet in life that does be in peace. Amen. You know, a man or a woman, you could have rags on and eating a piece of stale bread dipped in the water, and you have more peace in your life oh, yes. than the person who is sitting at the fanciest restaurant in Manhattan or some other part of the world, at the end of which the bill would be a whopping $1,000 because the bottle of wine is $500. Uh -huh. <laughs> And you got the most exquisite cuts from creatures that don't exist that are artificially made anyway. And you see, one thousand dollars, and inside you're miserable. You don't have peace with God. You have a man who is in his little one-bedroom apartment. Is a woman is at peace with God, even though he or she just ate a piece of bread, stale bread too, with a little down butter and a glass of water, mm -hmm. or a cup of tea. No fancy five-course meal or ten-course meal. I, am I saying it's wrong? No, that's not what I'm saying. Peace with God. Give yeah. thanks. Amen? Amen. And I'll uh, just be funny. I don't think, I don't think, I mean, facetious here. I don't think that God is taking a record of every meal you eat every day, and when you go up to the judgment, he said, now let me see, your breakfast was horrible, your lunch was horrible, your dinner was horrible, you don't deserve to go to heaven, you go to hell. Not at all. Not at all. Amen? Amen. Number um, six. Strengthens us to cope with disappointments. Because brethren, disappointments will come. Amen. So when you learn the art and practice the art of giving daily thanks, and the disappointments come, you can cope better with them. Yeah. Rather than, oh, woe is me. No need to get into the woe is me attitude. Number seven. It helps us develop and maintain better relationships in our families. There's nothing worse than having a family where everybody is complaining about something. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants more of this or less of that. Yes, that's, that's Boy, that bickering and inside fighting drains you emotionally and physically and spiritually. Are we listening, church? Mm -hmm. Helps us develop and maintain better relationships within our families. And friends. Number eight, helps us to become and stay humble. Yeah, you see, when we learn to give thanks to God, we also will give thanks to people who bless us, right? Mm -hmm. So, in giving thanks, that keeps us humble, and we realize we need people to live. 
There is nobody here or anywhere on the earth who does not need another human being. Even the multi billionaire needs a human being. Because the multi billionaire didn't make the plane he flies on. Yeah. Somebody has made it. Or the car he drives. Yeah. Or the phone he uses. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Number eight. No, nine, sorry, right? Yes. Saves us from harmful, destructive emotions. Saves us from harmful, destructive emotions. That's a whole sermon right there. How many of us enjoy having emotions that are topsy turvy? Unstable. Up, down, up, down. You're like a roller coaster all day long. It saves us from that because now we say, Lord, everything is in your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Number 10. It stabilizes us as we learn to depend on God. We are stable. Lord, I am depending on you. I don't see how this is going to work out. And God says, yeah, I know you don't see it, but you don't have to see it. I'm seeing it for you. Amen. So it stabilizes us. Number 11. It empowers us to become more effective witnesses for Christ. Because when people see that you are suffering loss of whatever you have lost, or whatever the, the hardships are, the pains are, and they see how you're coping skills, and you're still glorifying God, you know what you're doing? You are empowering them. To stay strong in the Lord. Go ahead, amen. amen. And number 12. And this was the only one that was deliberately put at number 12 because this, this is like, like a capsule. It gives us eternal perspective by which we more, we more eagerly await and anticipate the kingdom of God. Number 12. It gives us, giving thanks, gives us eternal perspective by which we more eagerly anticipate and yearn for the kingdom of God. As we go through our sufferings in life, we say, Lord, I know one day, Lord, you're coming back. I know one day I'll be with you, Lord. I know one day it'll all be over. Yeah. So now we anticipate the kingdom of God rather than cry and cry and cry. Am I making sense to anyone? Yes. So beloved, don't lose the perspective. Don't lose the perspective. It's easy. See, the winds of our culture have shifted dramatically now. And everybody seems to be beating up on everybody else like it is their business. You notice in the world of social media, everybody has an opinion on everything. Don't allow social media opinions to derail your walk with God. Stick to the Word of God. Be thankful you have the Bible. Whenever you open the Bible, do you thank God for the men who risked their lives to preserve the Bible? Do you thank God for the men who risked their lives to translate the Bible from one language to another? Yeah. Man who will burn to the stake. Yeah. Some of us don't realize these things. Yeah. We should be thankful. Keep the perspective. Life as a Christian, as I, as I close, life as a Christian is not about comfort, mm -hmm. convenience, mm -hmm. abundance, and pleasure. Amen. Although we will have levels of comfort. Right? Yeah, you yeah. buy winter clothing, that's a level of comfort. Mm -hmm. But that's not the focus of life. Mm -hmm. So don't miss what I'm saying. It is good and wonderful to have some comfort and convenience and abundance and pleasure. Nothing wrong with that. But if your life is focused on those things, you're going to miss the point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't have that, what happens? Amen. That's when you go downhill. So if your focus is about comfort, convenience, um, abundance and pleasure, and then things get in the way, you and those die down. Emotionally and spiritually. So rather than focus on comfort, convenience, abundance, and pleasure, how about focusing on challenge? Right now, I'm challenging you, right? But you know what challenge does? Challenge makes you grow. So challenge and growth. Without challenge, there is no growth. Think of it. Without challenge, there is no growth. So you have to be challenged from point one to point two. Step one to step two. You have to be challenged to move up the ladder. You have to be challenged to go higher up on that mountain. Because a lot of us would like to stay in the valley and just be relaxed. No, God says you're going to a mountain. Mountain of lies. Number three, the three, third point here, character. So, life as a Christian is about challenge, growth, character. What is God doing? He's developing character in us for the fourth point, to conform us to Christ. Character and conformity to Christ. What is God doing with you, you and me? 
He's building character so that we can be conformed to the glorious image of His Son, Jesus the Christ. Go ahead, amen. amen. So, beloved in the Lord, whatever you're going through in your life, nobody is diminishing or discounting the pain. We all have, including myself, lots of pain and struggles in life. But only one thing keeps me going. My focus is, Lord, I thank you. Something you're doing in my life that you feel that you need to do, and you need to work out, blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So this is why now I can say like Paul, in all things, give thanks. thanks. So let's give God thanks in everything, and don't wait for Thanksgiving Day. Amen. And many Americans like to call it Turkey Day. I hate that. Yeah. I hate when you call it Turkey Day. It's not Turkey Day. Wow. It's Thanksgiving. We're giving God thanks for the turkey. And thanks for all the abundance we have. And thanks for our families. And thanks for our friends. And thanks for the church. And thanks for Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And thanks most of all that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Yeah. Blessed be your name. Yeah. That's the perspective we need to have. So beloved, no matter what happens on maybe this Thanksgiving day, you don't even have any plans. Maybe it's just you by yourself. Maybe you have to go to work that day. I don't know. But you know what? Even if you have to go to work, you can give God thanks. Amen. Amen. And if it's you alone, you alone, you can still... Hey, here's a little thought for you. Let's just suppose it's you alone, okay? You have no invitation, anybody, and vice versa. You cook yourself a little meal, or buy yourself a little meal, set up a nice table, you can ask Brother Talib how to do that, make it look really <laughs> spiffy, you know what I'm saying, Brother? Make it look nice, put the, all of the decorations and the bouquet of flowers, and you have two chairs, one for you and one for the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm serious, I'm dead serious. And then you pray, dear Lord, thank you for joining me today at this table. Amen. You think I'm not crazy, right? No, I'm not crazy. Okay. You, you know I'm making sense. Yes, because that is what will yeah. empower you that's wonderful. for tomorrow. Yeah. And for next week, and for next month, and for next year, and until your dying day. Amen. In all things, give thanks. So, let me take this opportunity two weeks in advance to wish you a happy Thanksgiving day, whoever you are. But more importantly, to encourage you, instead of complaining and murmuring, give God thanks in everything, every single day, for the rest of your life. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.